Today we're going to show you how to use multiple different drop shadows in Photoshop to create this really cool text effect. So here we are in Photoshop. The first thing we're going to do is grab our move tool and click and drag from one image over to the other. We've got this never give up graphic. <laughs> Well, what I want to do is put this graphic right behind our subject because it just looks a little bit fancier. It looks like we know Photoshop a little bit more. So what we're going to do is make that invisible for now. Let's click on our background. We're going to go to select and then down to select subject. There we go. And usually it does a really good job selecting out our subject. In this case, it did pretty good. Uh, you can see it didn't really include part of the foot, but that's totally okay. If you want to refine that, it's really easy to do. You can go to select and then down here to select and mask. There we go. Select and mask. And then we can kind of see what we're actually working with hidden here. You can click this little button right here. And this basically just allows you to tell Photoshop like, hey, make sure to include that shoe, dude. Uh, that guy needs a shoe. You know, that, that that's part of him. That's important. Um, go up there. Everything else looks pretty okay. And then you can go in here and it's like, okay, you included the shoe, but now you got all this extra stuff. So you can go and start painting with this tool here. Okay, let's make our brush a little bit smaller. Use the open close brackets to do that. And then you can hold alt or option and you can just paint this out. So we're just gonna like kind of minus this out. Keeping in mind like this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because it's just gonna go like right in front of our text. And here's the like a quick little tool here. Okay, so I'm gonna just paint this out and I'm like, okay, cool, looking good, but I've just got a soft or just got like a regular round brush. So how do you deal with this corner? Well, what I like to do is just paint over it and then we'll just kind of come down here and I'm just using the trackpad on my laptop. So like you don't need any fancy tools. Okay, I like to just paint over the corner and then just go back to the regular brush. By the way, Alt or Option goes from the plus or the minus. So if you want to minus out, hold Alt or Option. If you wanted to go back to plus, you can just let go of that. Also up here, you can click on Add to Selection or Remove. Basically, that's what that does. Okay, so we just see I minus it out up to there and then I just come back here with a plus and then paint it back in and there you got your corner detail. So that's, that's basically how I handle corners with like a round brush, you know? All right, we can see it even works here. Here we go. We can just take this down there. Just don't even like really worry about the corner that much, honestly. There we go. Take it down there. Looking pretty good. Perfect. And then I just come back here and like paint it back in. There we go, all the way down. Pretty cool. All right, now I don't have to make this absolutely perfect. It's not like the most uh, most important part of this demo, but I want it to look like at least okay. There we go, so it included the shoe. So what we're gonna do here is we're still in select and mask. This is our dialog where we can adjust our selections. So what we need to do is here on the right hand side, let's just go all the way down to the bottom where it says output to and we're just going to say output to a selection. That sounds great. Output to a selection sounds great. Let's hit OK. So basically, they just updated the selection that we had on our background. Yay, updated selection, looking good. So now if I wanted to, let's say, duplicate this background layer, so click and drag it whoop, down here to that plus icon, and then click on my layer mask icon right there, bop, you can see basically it just cuts my subject out from the background. Okay, looks like it included something way over there. I thought that was my subject, uh, not my subject. Not a big deal. We're just gonna grab our lasso tool, make a very quick selection of the lasso tool, click on that layer mask, there we go, and then go to edit down here to fill, and we're gonna fill it with black on the layer mask, hit okay. That just makes it invisible. Alrighty, pretty cool. So all that, uh, you, we're going to include the PSD, so you don't have to actually do any of that, by the way. Uh, it'll be on flurn.com. Just follow the link down below. So we got our background, and then we got our subject right above our background. It's in the same place. You can move them around, see like, well, I can fly. Uh, but that's basically our setup, okay? So then we have our graphic. Never give up. And then we're just going to take this graphic here, and then we're just going to put it right below our subject. There we go. Pretty easy, right? And then I can just move this wherever I want. I don't have to worry about masking or whatever because like the subject is already up there. Let's just, whoops, double click there. We'll just call this subject and we'll just call this graphic. Pretty cool. So now let's get into like the, what I think is actually the cool part of this tutorial. 
You can use drop shadow as a really cool text effect and using Photoshop, you can also create multiple different drop shadows. So let's go ahead and show you how to do it. Here we are back in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and create this text effect. So here's their graphic. We're just gonna click on this gray area right near the graphic, double click there, and it's gonna bring up our layer style dialogue. You can also go to FX right down here. There we go. And we're gonna just click on blending options. Fantastic. You've seen this many, many times before. You probably used a drop shadow before. Just wanted to show you where it is. So drop shadows are here, right here at the bottom. Now the whole cool thing about this effect is that we can add multiple drop shadows by clicking on this plus button. So let's start with our first one. We'll just click on that and turn it on. Okay. Now it's always going to be like the color, the default is always going to be black, but I don't really like using black so much. Uh, let's just go to normal as our blending mode. I'm going to bring our opacity all the way up and we'll just bring our distance up, things like that. Okay. That looks good. So you can see, yeah, it defaults to black. I'm going to bring our spread a little bit down because I want to make a graphic size down. There we go. I want the edge to be like nice and crisp. You saw when my size was up, it was like a little fuzzy. This is a graphic. I want it to be nice and crisp. Okay. Now, we just talked about how it always defaults to black and shadows are like pretty much never black. And what I like to do is actually grab some information from this image. So we're just gonna click on our color here, boop. And then we got our color picker. Of course, you can just choose any color you want, like choose a bright red and there you go. Or if you bring your cursor over to your like image itself, you got your eyedropper tool. And now I can grab this color just like from this little palm tree right there. Dunk, and you can see it's like a really dark, yellowish brown, uh, but it's not black and it has the actual information from the image. Like it's a color from the image. So it's going to just work a lot better. Now there's one more option with the drop shadow tool that I think is really cool. Of course we have these options here on the right for opacity and angle distance and spread and size and all that stuff like that. But if you just take your cursor and you just bring it over to the image itself, you'll see it looks like the move tool now. You can actually just click there and start moving the drop shadow around and you don't have to mess with any of those sliders and it just works so nicely. I love that. Okay. Cool. So now we kind of know what we're actually going to be doing. Let's add another drop shadow and then we can kind of play with these together. So here we go. Let's click on this little plus icon right next to the drop shadow. Boop. And then you've got a second drop shadow. This time the color, let's just go like a little bit lighter. I can't even see it because uh, I need to move it. So we can go right over here and click and just drag this and move this down. And look, it's gonna move the other drop shadow. As I change my angle, it's gonna move the other drop shadow with it, which is incredibly cool. Let's go ahead and do this one more time. I'm gonna click this plus button. Our color here, let's just go like really light, beautiful. There we go, click there, and then we can use our move tool. By the way, sometimes like the move tool trick that I literally just told you about that I think is so cool, sometimes like it doesn't even do it. It's like, come on, what was going on Photoshop? You just hit okay and then double click right here again or on your drop shadow, double click there, go to your drop shadow again, and then now you'll be able to move it. Okay. So if you're like trying to follow along and you're like, mine is not letting me do it. You're not alone. You're not doing it wrong. It's just like sometimes it doesn't want to work, but when it does work, it's really cool. Cause you can now just like literally click and drag. It changes the angle of all three drop shadows at the same time. Um, and then you can just adjust your distance. Of course, you can then click on some of these on the interior and move those around as well if you want to do that. So we have all our drop shadows. This looks cool. It's a cool text effect and it's like actually insanely easy to do. Now, check this out. Uh, this is just a graphic layer. You guys can download this PSD. So you're gonna be able to get access to all this. You can follow along. This effects, I can just hide all these effects if I want. Okay, I can turn off each one of these drop shadows if I want to, and then check this out because we have this FX right here. This basically just tells it we have layer effects. If I wanted to copy this to our subject, it's actually really easy to do. Just hold Alt or Option and click on this FX and then click and drag. And you can see I got a little ghost icon where it says FX, FX. <laughs> just click there let go and then boom now you got the same effect on your subject i'm not like in love with it on my subject honestly i don't think it like really is that great uh but it's really cool that you can just like copy and paste it from one layer to the other really really easily of course i could just go in here and maybe i just want to move those drop shadows and look at that it's like linked the angle is linked to the other one because we're using this global light 
There we go. Let's go ahead and bring that up there. Say, all right, you're not going to have so much of an effect with you, but it's going to keep the same angle as the rest of it, which is kind of cool. You can unclick use global light, and then you can just put these kind of wherever. I could have that one over there, that one over there, <laughs> that one over there. Oh, this has global light still on it, but you get the idea. I'm going to hit escape because I don't want any of that. And we're going to turn this off because I really just think it looks good with this text effect. But look how cool that is. Like it gets all the detail of your graphic. Really nice effect. And it's really incredibly simple to do. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget you can follow along. Just click on the link right down below. You can download this PSD on flarn.com completely for free. Thanks again. And I'll flarn you later. Bye everyone.